Good morning, graduates and members of the RVCC community. My name is Crystal Gold, and I am proud to be up here representing the class of 2013. I have the honor of introducing our keynote commencement speaker and one of our very own, Katie Myler, a 2004 graduate of RVCC. After completing her studies at North Central University, Katie took a position in post-war Liberia to teach adult literacy courses. While in Liberia, she stayed at an orphanage with 86 children whose parents had been murdered during the war. Because of her interaction with these children, all who wanted nothing more than to go to school. Katie, a motivated and empowered individual, founded in 2009, More Than Me. More Than Me is an organization that provides educational opportunities to over 103 young girls in Liberia, and that number is expected to double by the end of this year. Already accomplishing what can be considered a lifetime of achievements, Katie Myler last December has, was awarded $1 million for her, for her organization from the Chase Community Giving Contest, as well as being recognized for her work as a leading educator and mentor by Chase. <laughs> Furthermore, Bono's One Campaign called her the most passionate person we've ever met. <laughs> Katie has received numerous awards and accolades, including the prestigious Outstanding Woman of the Year Award by the New Jersey Commission on the Status of Women, was, and was recognized by the New Jersey Seeds of Hope as a New Jersey state hero. She has also served as an Oprah ambassador. Fighting to end global poverty and bring education to disadvantaged communities, Katie is a person that we can all aspire to be. To say it is an honor and a privilege to introduce her may be an understatement. So without further anticipation, please give a warm welcome to an educator, mentor, and overall inspiring individual, Katie Myler. Thank you, Kristen. I read her story and I was like in tears. This woman is a powerhouse herself. Crystal, sorry, Crystal, oops. Um, but maybe one, you know, in a couple years, someone will be, you'll be introducing uh, one of, one of the, the graduates here. Um, well, I just posted on my Facebook account. I use Facebook all the time. That's how I won the million dollars. Um, you can pound right now on Twitter, pound, um, for the girls, and then we can, or no, RVCC graduation. No, but um, I just put on, I put it, posted on my Facebook that like I, I seriously didn't think I was ever smart enough to go to college. No one in my family ever went to college. Um, you no know, one really talked about college. No one really read to me when I was young. Um, I didn't know how to use a comma. And I just didn't, like, I didn't take my SATs. I just didn't think I was cut out for college. But, like, I really liked helping people. So when I, you know, I, I didn't really know what I was doing was community service. So I ended up getting a scholarship to, you know, I didn't even apply for it. But it was this Bill Clinton service award. And I got free money. And I was like, free money? OK, I'll go. So I was going to get paid to go to college. So I came here. And um, it was pretty cool. It wasn't, I realized I wasn't dumb. Like, I actually graduated with a really decent GPA. And, um, and I kept going on. But yeah, just, just similar to probably many of you sitting here, um, there was a lot of, you know, it was, you know, life was hard. Um, and I think it's, it's not always easy. <laughs> Wait, that was funny? I didn't even try to be, life is hard. Um, there was a lot of like drugs and abuse. And, um, you know, I woke up next to my uncle who died of a heroin overdose when I was a young girl. And my sister struggles on and off with a crack addiction. And she, pra like, she practically raised me. So there was a lot of, like, hardship going on. And, I mean, every, you know, I thought maybe I would work at a dentist's office as an assistant or this or that. But anyway, the long story short, I only have 10 minutes here. I guess it's going to rain and i got to hurry up. 
was that um, I ended up graduating from, I transferred to a four-year school, and I did my internship working with street kids in Bolivia, and I fell in love with a little boy named Carlito, and um, he slept under a car at night to keep warm, and I think part of me, like, saw a piece of myself in Carlito, and I wanted to do something more. I remember calling home. I'm, I wasn't super close with my family, but I was really close to my youth pastor from my church, and I called him, and I was like, hey, Pastor Don, I'm not coming home from Bolivia. I'm just going to chill here, and I'm going to help Carlito. And he's like, oh, no, you don't. He's like, you've got to finish school so you can help more kids. Um, I'm not sure that I totally agree with him. That's Maggie Doyne will be your next speaker next time she skipped college. <laughs> I, I'm not allowed to say that at a college graduation. I'm like, but, um, uh, <laughs> oops. No, but anyway, I, you know, I ended up finished college, and I got a job working for an international aid organization that sent me to Liberia, which is this, like, country in West Africa, and there's, like, crazy war, and, like, people's arms and legs were chopped off, and, like, I was reading about it, and I, like, Googled it. I'm like, where is that? And I realized it's, like, related to America. It's, like, these freed American slaves that formed the country. And I was like, I can't believe I'm going there. And I got there, and it, like, completely wrecked my life in the most amazing way possible. Um, everything that I thought I knew about like religion and success and marriage and it was like completely like back. Is there a Liberian in the house? I feel like people are like screaming. I see some Africans. I love it. But um, I don't know. Wait, that might be inappropriate. I don't, I'm not sure. But <laughs> okay, I gotta keep going. I was afraid. I was definitely afraid. And that's, I think that's kind of what I wanted to talk to everybody about right now is that yes, you're graduating from community college and many of you are going on to these amazing universities, but I'm sure some of you here are afraid. I think you might not know exactly what you're gonna do. What are you gonna do when you graduate from college? I get, I talk to a lot of university students that are like, what are we gonna do? And, um, and, and the reality is I was afraid too. I was afraid to go to college. I was afraid I wasn't smart enough. I was always afraid I wasn't good enough. To be honest with you, I just want a million dollars. I have like celebrity people helping me. Like we're opening up, I'm opening up a, fr my, a school for street ch children who are at risk of prostitutes. We have 108 of them. 10% were prostitutes at 10, like as young as 10 years old. And I'm still afraid to be honest. And, um, and, and maybe that's not you, but if it is you, um, one thing that's really helped me is that, you know, courage is not the absence of fear. It's the ability to act in spite of it. And yes, we can be afraid. Yes, we might not know what's next. Um, but I would say, you know, that, and I, I think I put this on Facebook too, if you, <laughs> we can be friends later, is that we have to listen to that little, like, it, it sounded so much more eloquent when I put it on Facebook, but um, like you listen to that thing inside of you, seriously. And I want it, you know, that, that guides you and lets you know that you're going on the right step. And it sounds so corny and we're at a graduation speech and that's what I'm supposed to say, but that's what I've done and it works. Um, it's been, it, let me just tell you right now, like we can have a private conversation later. Like it hasn't been all roses here. I mean, there were times where I, when I started the organization, I have, I don't have a family that like, I don't, not a trust fund kid. Like I had no house to sleep in. So I was couch surfing for two and a half, three years. I did crazy things to make money to pay my student loans off, which I still haven't paid off. And like, and it was hard and it's still hard and it's getting harder. You know, I won a million bucks. I thought that was gonna be like, that's, and, and it's like actually harder now. <laughs> um, but that's the thing is like life isn't easy and it's not, I don't think it's supposed to be, but we can have fun along the way. And I, I think I only have a few minutes left, so I wanted to end with, um, do you guys know what spoken word poetry is? Does anybody know what that is? It's kind of like hip hop, but like poetry and hip hop mixed together. So this is a poem that I wrote in the midst of one of the hardest times of my life. Um, I remember sitting Easter dinner, my uncle looked at me and we're all sitting there and he basically said I was 20, I'm 30 now, I was 26 at the time. And he said, what have you made of your life? I was just starting the organization. I think when you first start out living your dream, you know, you don't have newspapers writing about you. You're not invited to be the commencement speaker. You're not friends with Jada Pinkett Smith yet, you know, or she's not really my friend, but I like to pretend like she is. We did hug, we hugged once. <laughs> um, but like, the point is, is that before you like actually have all these things like that you can say that you did on Facebook, um, you know, people, it's hard to believe, you know, your friends and your family sometimes are the people that are, they're the least, you know, it, they find it the least hard, you know, they're the ones that discourage you the most, or for me it was. And I remember my uncle being like, what do you have to show for your life? You're 26 years old and you don't even have a car. And, um, 
Yeah, I didn't have a car. I was living on couches. It was pretty, it was a sad, it was a hard time. Um, but it pays off and hard work pays off. So I wrote this poem in the midst of that when everybody thought I was crazy, including my best friend Patty in the entire world. But now they all think I'm cool. But that's because I'm the commencement speaker, right? Okay, so here it goes. Riding my bicycle around New York City at 3.30 in the morning in the rain crying. I am about to bawl my eyes out. All these emotions tucked inside, they need to find a way out. How did we become a society where we can walk past a man sleeping on a wet street, never asking ourselves twice, how did this come to be? Or what if this was me? We just walk by, walk by. Over and over again, we pass an eye to the world outside of ourselves, thinking that if we put our hand out to lift our sister out, there'll be nothing left for ourself. But that's the only way out. For her, for you, or for me, I don't get why I'm the weird girl. I'm crazy because I fight for my dreams. Well, that's right, that's me. But don't think I don't bleed. My youngest memory is my dad trying to burn my skin off with hot water. I lived a life with a mother who told me she wished I wasn't her daughter. I woke up next to my, my dead uncle. Heroin was his slaughter. My older sister, my hero, in the emergency room twice, she almost lost her life. Cooked cocaine was her game, and now my nephew's left with a mother who's cooked her brain. So what if it's true? I walk around trying to love you because I want you to love me, and you don't get the message, so I have to play it on repeat. I fall off the boat. My lungs fill up with water, and I am about to drown. Until a picture of Regina who slept on a cement floor with rats. She was surrounded by thieves and held down by illiteracy, but Regina still believed and she looked at me and I knew that she would make it. So I walk around this world naked, showing my most vulnerable parts, hoping to stir your heart, to shake you up, Mr. Numb. I don't blame you because you have become what everybody else here has become. Marching to the beat of the American dream drum, Except for you fail to realize it's in America where people commit suicide. It's in America where people pop pills to get through life. Is that home where no one's ever home? Is that ring or vacation or the opinion of that other dissatisfied family really what makes you wake up every single day and go to that job that you hate and I'm crazy? Well, crazy is what crazy does and this crazy thinks that I can love, ignorance, hurt, and hate away in the way that I live day to day. I am gonna dance the world sadness away, salsa. Or at least I'll put a smile on your face. Standing like a fool in the middle of the street, I sing, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, bop, bop, bop. This little light of mine, Woo! I'm gonna let it shine. I am gonna break in and liberate you from the chains that our culture has taught you to wear so well. What if one by one we, put our, we let our Berlin walls crash down and we walked around with our frowns turned the other way around and we looked into each other's eyes to see the fire that burns inside? We are not enemies. We are not different political parties. We are not our parents' armies. We are humanity. So that's... That's the, end, that's the end of my commencement speech. But I hope that you look fear in the eye and you tell fear, th this is what I said, I pushed it away. I simply did not let myself become af afraid. Fear begets fear and fa power begets power. I willed myself to beget power and it wasn't long before I actually wasn't afraid. Go out there and be courageous and, and live for something bigger than just yourself because this world needs you. I love you. Smooches, Facebook friends. I have a plaque here <laughs> that I will read. Uh, I'm proud to read uh, because it presents an honorary degree, Associate of Arts, to Katie Myler. It should simply say, wow. 
But it says instead, on this day, Saturday, May 18th, 2013, for your courage, commitment, and compassion that have brought hope and opportunity to girls living in Liberia through your More Than Me Foundation for demonstrating the potential of education to lift people out of poverty and despair, for showing the power of one individual to change the lives of countless others, and for inspiring all of us to believe in ourselves and our ability to transform lives and build stronger communities. We so proudly present this honorary degree to you, Katie Myler. <laughs>